Chapter 20 of Kabumpo and Oz. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Kabumpo and Oz by Ruth Plumley Thompson. Chapter 20 The Proper Princess is Found. Is the mirror safe, and have you still got the gold knob? asked Pompa as the country swung out onto the deadly desert. The question box said I was to trust them, you know. And by what right did Ozma take the box? wheezed Kabumpo irritably, as he felt in his pocket to see whether the magic articles were still there. That's gratitude for you. We find Glegg's box of mixed magic and rescue her, and off she goes with all our magic, leaving us to the tender mercies of a runaway country. You find the box, shrilled Wag. Well, I like that. Oh, what difference does it make, groaned Pompa, stretching out upon the ground. They were all completely exhausted by the day's adventures, and as cross as three sticks, all except Peg Amy, who never was cross. I shall marry this princess and save my country but I'm going away as soon as the wedding is over and spend the rest of my life in travel, announced Pompa gloomily. Don't blame you, rubbled the elegant elephant with a sniff. Ah, now, laughed Pig. That doesn't sound like you, Pompa. Why, maybe this princess will be so lovely you'll want to carry her straight back to Pumperdink. I think princesses are a great bore, said Wag with a terrific yawn. I prefer plain folks like Peg and the Scarecrow. You're all hungry. That's what's the matter, chuckled the wooden doll. When you've had some supper, you'll be just as anxious to find the Princess of Suntop Mountain as you were to find Ozma. Here's the winky country now, and there's a star for good luck. Peg waved toward the green fields with one hand and toward the clouds with the other. It was dusk now, and just one star twinkled cheerily in the sky. I'll set you down, but I'm not going away, said the runaway country determinedly. For if that little old gnome doesn't turn up, I'm going to catch you all again. Ozma never forgets. She'll keep her promise, said Peg, and you must do just as she told you to do, for she has some powerful magic, and can send you right back to where you came from. Can she? gulped the country curiously. You might wait a while, though, suggested Pompa darkly. After I've seen this new princess, a runaway country might be a very good thing. Well, you can't expect her to marry you if you talk that way, said Peg warningly, as the country came to a stop in a huge field of daisies. I'll wait, it said hopefully, as the four travelers swung themselves down. I wonder if we are in the north-central part, murmured Peg Amy, looking around anxiously. Now it happened the country had crossed the Delhi Desert slantwise, and although none of the party knew it, they were scarcely a mile from Suntop Mountain. I see a garden, cried Wag, twitching his nose hungrily. Come on, Prince, let's find some supper. With head down and dragging his feet, Pompa followed Wag. Kabumpo began jerking snappishly at some treetops, and Peg Amy sat down to think. I wish, thought the wooden doll, looking up at the bright star, I wish I might have asked the box one little question. Peg Amy looked so solemn that Kabumpo stopped eating and regarded her anxiously. What's the matter? asked the elegant elephant gruffly, for he quite counted on Peg's cheerfulness. I was thinking about it again, admitted Peg apologetically, about being alive before. I'm sure I was alive before I was a doll, Kabumpo. I think I was a person, like Pompa, she continued softly. You're much better as you are, said the elegant elephant uneasily, for it just occurred to him that the magic mirror would tell Peg who she was as well as the question box. But should he let her look in it? That was the question. Poor, tired old Kabumpo shifted from one foot to the other as he tried to make up his mind. 
Two huge drops of perspiration ran down his trunk. What good would it do, he reasoned finally. Suppose it told something awful. It couldn't change her, and it might make her unhappy. No, he would not let Peg look in the mirror. How would you like to have this pearl bracelet, he asked in an embarrassed voice. Why, Kabumpo, I just adore it, cried Peg, springing up in a hurry. And I'm not going to worry about being alive any more, for everyone is so lovely to me I ought to be the happiest person in Oz. You are, puffed Kabumpo, clumsily slipping the bracelet on Peg's wooden arm. And if we ever get back to Pumperdink, you shall have as many silk dresses as you want, and... The rest of the sentence was smothered in a hug. Peg Amy was growing fonder and fonder of pompous old Kabumpo, and by the time he had recovered his breath, Wag and the prince came ambling back together. They had found an orchard and a kitchen garden, and as they were no longer hungry, both were more cheerful. Let's play Scop Hotch, suggested Wag amiably. I'm tired of hunting princesses. There was a smooth patch of sand under the trees, and Wag hopped over and began marking out the squares with his paw. Scop Hotch, laughed Pompa, while Peg gave a skip of delight. Play if you want to, wheezed Kabumpo, shaking himself wearily. I feel about as playful as a stone lion. Besides, hopscotch isn't an elephant game. Peg, Wag, and Pompa began to hopscotch for dear life. Peg often tumbled over for it is hard to keep your balance on wooden legs. But it was Peg who won in the end, and Wag crowned her with daisies. I wish we could go on just as we are, gasped Pompa, mopping his face with a silk handkerchief. We're all good chums, and, if it weren't for Pumperdink's disappearing, we might travel all over Oz and have no end of adventures together. Speaking of disappearing, said Gumumbo, opening one eye, for he had dozed off during the game. I suppose we'd better be starting if we're to save the kingdom at all. Goodbye to pleasure, sighed Pompa, as Kabumpo lifted him to his back. Goodbye to everything. Oh, cheer up, begged Peg, settling herself on Wag's back. Hurrah, hurrah, hurrah! A large yellow bird rose suddenly from a nearby bush and flapped its wings over Pompa's head. Hurrah! Hurrah! Shoo! Get away, grumbled Kabumpo crossly. What are you cheering about? She said to, called the bird, darting over Peg Amy's head. Hurrah! 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 Let me teach you how to be cheerful in three chirps. First, think of what you might have been. Next, think of what you are. Then think of what you are going to be. Do you get it? The bird put its head on one side and regarded them anxiously. He might have been King of Oz, instead of which he is only a lost prince, and he's going to be married to a mountaintop princess. Do you see anything cheerful about that? demanded Kabumpo angrily. Clear out. We'll do our own cheering. Shall I go? asked the hurrah bird, looking very crestfallen and pointing his claw at Peg Amy. Maybe you can tell us the way to Suntop Mountain, said Peg politely. You can see it from the other side of the hill replied the hurrah bird. I'll give you a few hurrahs for luck. Hurrah! 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 Oh, go away, grumbled Kabumpo. Not till you look at my nest. Did you ever see a hurrah bird's nest? He chirped brightly. Let's look at it, said Pompa, smiling in spite of himself. The hurrah bird preened itself proudly as they peered through the bushes. Surely it had the gayest nest ever built for it was woven of straw of many colors, and hung all over the nearby branches were small Oz flags. In the nest three little yellow chicks were growing up in a hurrahs, and they chirped faintly at the visitors. Remember, called the father hurrah as they bade him goodbye, you can always be cheerful in three chirps if you think of what you might have been, what you are, and what you are going to be. Hurrah! 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 There's something in what you've said, chuckled Wag. Goodbye. The moon had come up brightly, and even Kabumpo began to feel more like himself. There's a lot to be learned by traveling, eh, Wag? 
he winked at the rabbit, who was just behind him. Let's see. Somersaults for sums. Never be gomrish. And now, how to be cheerful in three chirps. Hurrah, hurrah, hurrah. The elegant elephant began to plow swiftly through the daisy field, so that in almost no time they reached the top of the little hill. And as they did so, Peg gave a little scream of delight. As for the others, they were simply speechless. A purple mountain rose steeply ahead, and set like a crown upon its summit was a glittering gold castle. The loveliest, laciest gold castle you could imagine, with a hundred fluttering pennants. All down the mountainside spread its lovely gardens, its golden arbors and flower-bordered paths. I've seen it before, cried the wooden doll softly, but no one heard her. Pompa drew a deep breath for the castle, shimmering in the moonlight, seemed almost too beautiful to believe. Phew, whistled Wag, breaking the silence. The princess of Sun Top Mountain must be wonderful. Shall we start up now? gasped Kabumpo, swinging his trunk nervously. I don't believe she'll ever marry me. Let's don't go at all, muttered the Prince of Pumperdink in a shaky voice. Oh, come on, called Wag who was curious to see the owner of so grand a castle. "'But we mustn't go, Wag,' gasped Big Amy. "'How would it look to have a shabby old doll tagging along when he's trying to talk to the princess?' "'If Peg doesn't go, I'm not going,' declared Pompa stubbornly. "'You're just as good as any princess,' said Kabumbo, "'and I'm not going without you either.' As the elegant elephant refused to budge, and there seemed no other way out of it, Peg Amy finally consented and the four adventurers started fearfully up the winding path, almost expecting the castle to disappear before they reached the top, so unreal did it seem in the moonlight. There was no one in the garden, but there were lights in the castle windows. Just as if they expected us, said the elegant elephant, as they reached the tall gates. Pompa opened the gates, and the next instant they were standing before the great castle door. Shall we knock? chattered Wag, his eyes sticking out with excitement. No, wait a minute, begged the prince, who was becoming more agitated every minute. Here's a mirror and the doorknob, quavered Kabumpo. Didn't the question box say to trust them? Why, look here, Pompa, my boy, it fits. Clumsily, Kabumpo held up the glittering doorknob he had brought all the way from Pumperdink. Then he slipped it easily on the small gold bar projecting from the door. But instead of looking joyful, Pompa groaned dismally. He started to protest, but Kabumpo had already turned the knob, and they found themselves in the glittering gold courtroom. Now for the princess, puffed Kabumpo, looking around with his twinkling little eyes. Here, take the mirror, Pompa. The room was empty, although brilliantly lighted, and the prince stood uncertainly in the very center. Suddenly, with a determined little cry, Pompa rushed over to Peg Amy who stood leaning against a tall gold chair. Peg, choked Pompa, dropping on his knees beside the wooden doll. I'll have to find some other way to save Pumperdink. I'm not going to marry this princess and have you taken away from me. You're a proper enough princess for me and we'll just go back to Pumperdink and he... The mirror! Look in the mirror! screamed Wag, who was sitting beside Peg Amy. Unconsciously, Pompa held out the gold mirror and Peg, leaned over to listen, had looked directly into it. Above Peg's pleasant reflection in the mirror, they read these startling and important words. This is Peg Amy, Princess of Sun Top Mountain. While Pompa stared with round eyes, the words faded out, and this new legend formed in the glass. The proper princess is found. This is the proper princess. I always knew you were a princess, cried Wag, turning a somersault. The big rabbit had just come right side up, when a still more amazing thing happened. The wooden body of Peg melted before their eyes, and in his place stood the loveliest little princess in the world. And yet, with all her beauty, she was strangely like the old Peg. Her eyes had the same merry twinkle, and her mouth the same pleasant curve. Oh, cried Princess Peg, holding her arms out to her friends, now I am the happiest person in Oz. End of chapter 20